Well, hello and welcome to Straight Talk on Mining, the webcast series. I may be making forward statements, so be forewarned. So, the gold and silver epithermal deposit module number two. This is a sample of quartz and rhodochrosite. Rhodochrosite is this pink mineral. It's a manganese mineral. Again, you can see rhythmic banding through this, and this is from the Las Peñas zone, which uh, occurs south of Fruta del Norte in Ecuador. Beautiful, beautiful high-grade stuff here, and the black bands contain a lot of electrum in them. It is very, very important where you look for these deposits. You know, they talk about real estate, the most important thing in real estate being location, location, location. Well, the same thing applies to ore deposits. And epithermal type deposits are confined to specific areas in the earth. And here they are around the Pacific Ocean and concentrated in what's called the Pacific Ring of Fire. And you can see it goes up the west coast of South America, across Central America, and then up through the west coast of the U.S., across the Aleutians, down through Japan, down through the Philippines, and then eventually right down through, uh, through New Zealand. And you can see uh, there are active volcanoes all over the place. There are a lot of dormant volcanoes or extinct volcanoes in these areas. But this is where a lot of the gold deposits are being found today in proximity to these, these places in rocks that are not really that old. Uh, now, there are volcanoes here in Kilauea and Mauna Loa and Hawaii, and I'll get to that in a second here. There can be epithermal zones, uh, volcanic areas that are no longer active, like, for instance, in, um, in Turkey, uh, in uh, many, many places, even in the eastern seaboard of the U.S., up through uh, the uh, Alabama, Georgia, Carolinas. Um, and uh, this is one that I worked on myself for my Ph.D., on the left side, you see a sample of what's called cockade texture. That's where the, the minerals grow uh, around big fragments of rock and they grow into open spaces. And this is very characteristic of epithermal type deposits. And this comes from a deposit called Springpole Lake, which contains over 5 million ounces of gold. And it is, I believe, the oldest recognized epithermal at 2.7 billion years. It occurs not too far from Red Lake in uh, northwestern Ontario uh, in Canada. And uh, certainly there's no volcanoes there today, but there were um, almost 3 billion years ago. And that's what generated this thing. It's a generated by hot water circulation. On the right, we have also cockade texture. You see fragments of rock that are uh, they're completely encircled by other minerals, quartz growing in here and quartz growing into an open space here. And this is from the Crescent Mine at Cripple Creek, Colorado. And more than 22 million ounces of gold has been extracted over time uh, from Cripple Creek. Very, very well-known and studied epithermal district, but much, much, much younger than than uh, uh, than Springpole Lake on the on the left side here. So epithermal deposits only form in feldspar rich rocks, and they're called felsic, felsic because of feldspar, or silicic, if uh, because they're silica rich as well. And you won't find them in basalt. Basalt is a rock that is very rich in magnesium and iron but you don't find epithermal type uh, deposits in them. Uh, and those, an example of those types of rocks would be in Hawaii or the Galapagos Islands and many, many other places around the world that have basalt and you're not gonna find epithermal deposits in them, unfortunately. Anybody who lives in those areas, I'm, I'm sorry to inform you, <laughs> but you're not gonna find any of them. 